Hello Namibia, I am Dr. Demi Rasant and I am currently practicing as a general practitioner at Origin Medical Practice in Olympia, Vintuk. I also hold a diploma in anesthesia, where I spend most of my free time in theatre. Hepatitis is a global cause for concern because it has quite devastating sequelae and it can cause or it has the potential to cause an outbreak and epidemic spread. With a much recent outbreak of Hepatitis E in Namibia, it is an important topic to discuss so that the community at large can know when to seek medical help. Hepatitis is the inflammation of liver tissue that is caused by either viruses, which I will discuss a little later, and also your toxic substances such as chemicals or drugs like the conventional panada we all use. Alcohol is a major cause as well, and then also your autoimmune disorders and metabolic causes such as obesity. So hepatitis can be self-limiting in the fact that it can recover on its own, or it can lead to fibrosis or scarring of the liver, which then in turn causes cirrhosis, which has its different other complications, and then eventually it lead to liver cancer. For the sake of this talk, we will discuss mainly the viral causes of hepatitis. You get five types, which is hepatitis A, B, C, D and E, and they were named in order of their discovery. So in general, they have a similar presentation in the way they present as your signs and symptoms, but they differ in how they are transmitted, the progression of the disease, such as chronicity, and then the genetic makeup of hepatitis. It is important to note that to make a definitive diagnosis we need to do certain blood samples and that's the only way you can find out what hepatitis you have. We can't go just based on your signs and your symptoms but the key signs and symptoms to look out for include that of fatigue, malaise, diarrhea, loss of appetite, yellowing of the skin and or eyes and then also your pale stools and dark colored urine. But it's important to note that you do not require all of these symptoms to have the disease. You can also be asymptomatic, which means that you don't show any symptoms at all. Treatment for viral hepatitis is mainly that of supportive treatment, where we manage your signs and symptoms. Liver transplants can also be done, but they are currently unavailable in our setting. More specific to hepatitis C virus, we do have direct acting antivirals, which can be used, but they are not available in our public sector. And then as for your chronic hepatitis B virus, we do have your antivirals that are also used in patients with HIV. So looking at hepatitis A, it can be a mild but also a very severe disease, but it doesn't have the opportunity to progress to a chronic form of the disease. Your adult population tends to have a little bit more signs and symptoms than your childhood population and it is said that children under 6 years of age do not have any symptoms at all or if they do have symptoms it is very mild. Hepatitis A and E are transmitted through the fecal oral route which means they are closely linked to unsafe food and water consumption, inadequate sanitation, poor personal hygiene and hepatitis A can also be spread through certain sexual practices. With regards to hepatitis B, it can be both acute or chronic, and it is 100 times more infectious than that of HIV and 10 times more than that of hepatitis C virus. It is transmitted through either vertical or horizontal, vertical meaning mother to child transmission, and horizontal through contaminated blood through infected needles, tattooing, or piercings. And it's important to note that hepatitis B remains active on surfaces of your syringes, your needles, for up to one week. For hepatitis C, the transmission mode is the same as that of hepatitis B virus. But also note that in hepatitis C, we also get it through the transfusion of unscreened products as your blood products, and then also through unsterilized medical equipment.
With regards to hepatitis D virus, it requires the presence of hepatitis B virus to be present in order to replicate. And your high risk groups are those who are injecting drugs as well as those who are receiving hemodialysis. It can also progress to a very rapid form of chronic liver disease which can lead to cancer and even death. Last but not least, Hepatitis E. This is also transmitted through the fecal oral route, the same as for your Hepatitis A virus, and so it is closely linked to that of drinking contaminated water. We had an outbreak in Namibia in 2018, which affected almost 10,000 people in Namibia, and of those that were affected, 66 people demised, and of those that demised, 40% were pregnant mothers. So we can see that our vulnerable group for Hepatitis B E contraction is indeed your pregnant mothers. As for the prevention of hepatitis A, we can prevent it in ways that we improve sanitation, food handling safety and then also through immunization or vaccination of your young ones and as adults as well. For the prevention of hepatitis B, we then look at is it present in mother to child? If it is present, we then look at ways of protecting the mother throughout the pregnancy, especially in the third trimester, and then also by immunizing the young one at birth and also within 24 hours. And then we also follow the scheduled immunization schedule where we get the uh, vaccination at birth, six weeks, 10 weeks, and 14 weeks. And then you can also get subsequent boosters if necessary. For the prevention of hepatitis C, there is no vaccine available. So prevention here is very important. And the ways we prevent it is by ensuring that sterilized equipment is used for each and every patient and also that our blood products are screened. And as I mentioned, that our blood products in Namibia are well screened and well employed for safety of the patient. The way we prevent hepatitis D is by vaccinating with hepatitis B. As I told you before, that hepatitis D requires that or the presence of hepatitis B virus. Ways to prevent hepatitis E is by ensuring that there's good and safe sanitation, safe drinking water, good personal hygiene methods, and also taking care of our pregnant mothers during the antenatal phase. Please do note that we do not have a vaccine available for hepatitis E, so it is important that you take care of yourself. To summarize, hepatitis is a notifiable medical condition and highly infectious and should not be disregarded. Prevention is key in the fight against hepatitis and public awareness contributes significantly to minimizing the spread of hepatitis. Please visit your nearest doctor or health facility to learn more. Thank you for watching. I am Dr. Rasant, dedicated to a healthier you.